So you made it back to the castle, and what did you find? A buttload of lone shadows. There's lone shadows up on the roof, there's lone shadows in the hallways, lone shadows in the bushes. It's like Oprah's doing a giveaway. That's a lot of crap to deal with all these jumpy, flippy, kicky bastards. But that's okay. That's why you're here. We're going to tackle them together. Welcome to the Get Good Guide for Sekiro Mini Bosses Part 4. Now, similar to before, this run is also on New Game Plus, so while I do have more health than you probably have at this point, keep in mind my enemies are hitting significantly harder. In addition to that, because I know you don't have all prosthetic upgrades by this point, I won't be using anything that's super high tier in keeping both my skills and my prosthetics in line with what you likely have on a new game playthrough. With all that being said, let's tackle the bosses that show up after the castle initially gets sieged. And the first up on our list is everyone's favorite, Angry Ragey Stompy Boy. We got another one, this time he's pinned up in this nice little room. But this actually works out to our advantage, because it's going to be nice and easy to get a death drop on. Hang from the ledge. Go right on over to when you're above him. And then all you're going to do is just drop and hit R1. After this, the strategy for the Chained Ogre is basically identical to what we had before. Hit him with oil, light him on fire. After he's burning, go ahead and whack him a couple times. And then just run away. Very similar to the previous Chained Ogre, we're going to do this just rinse and repeat. Hit him with more oil. We're going to wait for him to try and do something, running some circles around him. There's a nice big drop kick. Thanks for making yourself vulnerable. Look at that fire. Who doesn't love some toasty chained ogre? It's like the best summer barbecue meal you can get. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Kicking is not nice. If he does kick you, use this nice big thing right here. Look at this. You know, sit here. And just kite him in a circle around it. And then wait until he whiffs. And hit him again. Walk behind the grab. Hit him again. There's actually one more chained ogre you'll find later in the game after the castle uh, comes under siege for a second time. But he actually doesn't drop prayer beads, so you can kill him if you want, and you can use the same strategies you saw here, but it doesn't matter if you kill that one. Whereas this one is going to give you some tasty, tasty healing potency. Now that we've gained the ability to dive underwater, it's time to tackle our first water headless. Now these are pretty much the same as the normal headless, they'll do the hair strand attack, they'll still swing at you. The only thing that's new here is they gain an ability where they try to suck you up and do their grab attack. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind during this fight. You can still use gourds, and you can use modeled purple gourds, but while you're in the water, you can't use various consumables, divine confetti being one of those, for example. You also can't use things like pacifying agents, so because of that, the modeled purple gourd is almost necessary if you're going to be getting hit at all in this encounter. We can still pop divine confetti to get some bonus damage, but you're only going to be able to use it while you're up here on the surface. So go on, pop that, and then jump on in and dive. Now this fight can be done without confetti. You can actually just, you know, do that right there, where you dodge towards him and get a hit in. Um, you know, it's not exactly a hard encounter, but you can use confetti to get some bonus damage. He does a suction attack, dodge away. Swings his sword, either deflect or dodge away. Like I said, you don't need confetti for this fight. You could simply just walk up and R1 him or do the uh, that attack you just saw me do, the dodge one. If you need to heal, just back off. Make sure you get off a dodge between each heal, as it usually won't give you enough time to do uh, two dodges. When he does the tendril attacks, I like to dodge once to the side and then dodge towards him. That usually throws off the tracking. But a couple attacks later and this guy should go down. Now the reason we're taking out this guy now, and uh, we haven't taken out any of the other Headless yet, as I mentioned in the last episode, in a little bit here, you're probably going to make your way to Fountainhead Palace, and once you've reached Fountainhead, you gain the ability to just freely buy Divine Confetti. Whereas this one you can kill without Divine Confetti, and Divine Confetti just makes it that much easier. The others are a little bit trickier, so it's better to just wait until you can freely purchase it, and that way you don't have to worry about running out. Next up, we have our first encounter with Lone Shadow Masanaga. We're actually going to be fighting this guy twice, once right now, and then once back in the Harada memory when we go after Owl Father. 
However, in addition to the stuff that you can expect from Lone Shadows, the Perilous Thrust, the Perilous Sweep, he has a couple new things. There's a three-hit combo Perilous Attack that can poison you, which you can avoid, but on top of that, this one in particular has a chance to buff himself with the Yashiriku Sugar, allowing him to do immense damage and almost one-shotting you. Because of that, it's incredibly important that you stay aggressive in this fight and don't give him enough room to actually pop that sugar. First, you're going to walk on over this way because he has a couple wolves we're going to take care of. Our first wolf. Killing that wolf should aggro the other two. As you can see, a couple shurikens later and they should be no more. Hop on up. Be sure to crouch. And if you want, you can get an eavesdrop opportunity on him while he's right here. But other than that, we're going to go behind, pop an Akko Sugar, and then jump right on him. You can still use High Monk to dunk all over him anytime he tries to do a sweep. It's still McCurry the Thrust. But as I mentioned, the biggest thing here is staying absolutely aggressive on this guy and not giving him a chance to pop his buff. There's the buff. If that buff goes off, there's a good chance you're going to be in trouble. So, you know, you can feel free to reset things if you want. But otherwise, just stay continually aggressive until you get that death blow. Next up, we have Lone Shadow Vile Hand. And as you can probably guess from the name, he's a big fan of that three hit poison combo I mentioned that Malsanaga has a chance to use. So, before you do this fight, crouch down down, and if you look over to the left, you'll notice another purple bro. So walk right up behind him, get a death blow. Right after he's dead, Pause, options, quit, yes. Now what we're doing here is essentially just resetting the world state. By quitting, it'll remove any aggro and it'll put us right back outside of the room. However, the purple bro will now be dead and we can walk up and get a free death blow on Masanaga. Or excuse me, on Vile Hand. Um, while you can run to de-aggro him, this is a lot more consistent and it'll work 100% of the time. It's actually a technique used a lot in the speedrunning community and it applies just perfectly to this situation. Aside from that, just walk on up and get your death blow, and then from there, it's a pretty standard fight against the Lone Shadow. You still want to carry the thrust, you still want to Sempo Leaping Kicks anytime he tries to do a sweep. He hasn't even done his poison move once, I want to at least... Let you guys see it once. There's the poison. As you can see, he turns his hand into a little snake and tries to charge you with it. But other than that, you know, Sempo Leaping Kicks will pretty much take care of this encounter on its own. Kill him, get your prayer bead, and then it's time to head up on top for another big boss fight. Now, if you got the old bell and headed back to Harada, and you should, because there's two more prayer beads you can get here, once you walk up these stairs, you'll notice a lone shadow. Now, before you aggro him, I would suggest going down here, and we're going to clear this bridge briefly. Run straight up to Big Boy and get a death blow on him. And then use the spring loaded axe to take these guys out. Alright. Now, with our path cleared, it's time for Masanaga again. Except this Masanaga likes to summon wolves. He's not going to buff with Yashiriku Sugar or anything, but he's going to summon wolves into the fight as you continue to fight him. So, to that extent, drop off my axe here. Uh, you're going to want both the Finger Whistle and a Shuriken, ideally the Gouging Top or higher. Uh, the Finger Whistle you can of course use to confuse the wolves and that will take them out of the fight. The Gouging Top you can use to kill them in as little as two Shurikens. But run on up here, he'll aggro as soon as you walk in here, and then immediately just run back, haul ass. You want to go far enough that he de-aggros. Now what I like to do, I'll usually use the Finger Whistle just to confuse the wolves initially, and then once I have a clean opening I'll kill him with the Shuriken. And from then on out, I just stay on him and don't let him summon more wolves. So walk right up, get that death blow. Want to blow the finger whistle real quick. Don't know if it uh, affected any of the wolves. But like I said, if it didn't, um, you know, it takes as little as two shurikens, and that'll kill a wolf usually. And at this point, it just becomes a regular fight against the Lone Shadow. You know, when he tries to do that kick, hit the Makiri. Stay on him, and actually keep your shurikens out, because he'll try and summon more wolves, but when he does, you can use a shuriken to interrupt it, and aside from that, it's pretty much just standard Lone Shadow. You know, deflect, use Monk if he tries to go for his sweep, use Makiri if he tries to go for his thrust. Let's see, he'll try and uh, make him a chance to summon some wolves here. Come on, come on. 
Whistle. Alright, he doesn't want to. He chose poorly. Anyway, if he does decide to summon wolves after you've killed that initial group, a single shuriken to the chest will interrupt the animation. After that point, just get on him again and take him on down. So after taking out Masanaga, it's time for another enemy in the past, Drunkard. Except he also has Vilehand protecting him. So from here, just run past all these guys. These enemies will aggro, but they usually won't go all the way over to the, the Drunkard. I've seen him actually come over once in pretty much all the recording attempts I've done. So, uh, just walk up, get enough flow here. And around the corner. Up, up here. Get a death blow. Get a death blow. These enemies are actually fighting, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna leave Drunky Sleepy Boy right there. We're not gonna kill him just yet. He's gonna be bestowed a little bit later. Go, excellent. He didn't aggro. If he does and you have to kill him, that's fine. He'll just make the fight a little bit easier if he's left alive. On over to this guy, take him out. And go on over and kill the poison archer, because no one wants to deal with the poison archer. Now, after they're dead, we're going to run this way. Both the uh, vile hand as well as the drunkard should follow. It's perfect. And now we're going to run back over here. Pretty much to the edge of the water. Now be careful because there are some vile hands up top you can see. If you go too far, they might notice you. And we want the health bar to disappear, but the music to stay on. What we're trying to do here is keep the vile hand aggro, but lose the drunkard aggro. Now, before you kill this guy, you're going to want to have Bastola Ninjutsu on. And then you should also have Vault Ogre. Basically, we're going to posture break him, jump over him, use Bastol, use Akos, and then jump onto the Drunker. Heal on up before we finish him. Come on, stop it. Jump over. Stole. Paco Sugar. I can actually sneak up this way. Never tried, but we'll see. Right up behind him. And now just R1 away. Obviously, don't get hit by stuff, but with the stole and Akos, you should be able to do a ton of damage here. Once it runs out, that's fine. We're actually, we knew it was going to run out. But as you can see, he's already halfway dead. So now, remember the drunk he left alive? Hello. New Bastol. Re Enchant Akos. You can see we just absolutely shred the shit out of the drunkard. But with them knocked out, we only have five remaining bosses that we need to battle for prayer beads, and the rest of those are only going to occur after Fountainhead Palace. So thanks for coming on by, and we'll catch you guys soon enough with more as we tackle the final mini-bosses of the game.